us should be Kansas City for the Big 12 championship as we start a day a four game set that begins with Iowa State and Baylor and caps tonight with Kansas and Texas and we are settling in for the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship this is going to be a great day of basketball as we welcome you to Kansas City in the Sprint Center, we've already had two terrific games. Last night, TCU and West Virginia both survived and advanced. Kansas State TCU will be the second game of our early doubleheader. Texas Tech, West Virginia, and Kansas and Texas cap the night as we welcome you to Kansas City with what has been a season filled with storylines, the most notable of which in the Big 12, Kansas, for the first time in a decade and a half, not the champions because Kansas State and Texas Tech were able to outlast the Jayhawks, share the title. Jared Culver, he deserves player of the year, and eight of the 10 teams in this league projected to be in the NCAA tournament field, according to Joey Brackett. Hi again, everyone, Bob Wischusen, here with Fran Fraschilla. Holly Rowe will join us in just a moment. It has been a roller coaster for Baylor. It has also been one heck of a second half roller coaster for Iowa State. With more on that, here's Holly. Well, Iowa State has lost five of their last six games. And when you look at some of their things on the court, there have been some chemistry issues. There was a rumored fight at practice, left one player possibly injured. But the players told us yesterday that they are back on the right track. Lindell Wiggins says they're figuring things out. I think we're just trying to, you know, find ourselves, you know, late in the season, um, you know, because we've been going through some losses and things like that. But um, that last game against Texas Tech, I think we, you know, took a, a step in the right direction, you know, just, you know, playing together and, you know, playing hard for one another. So I think that last game, you know, put us in the right direction. Mary Alshayok said they had a team meeting after that West Virginia game when tempers flared. He says we are back on the right path. He feels like guys are playing okay. together. They had some good strides in their last game, even though it was a loss. We'll see if they can get that together and have good chemistry here in front of Hilton South. Lots of good fans here in the building for them. I think they have the most talent in the Big 12. They have to share the basketball. They have three or four guys who are really good at scoring, but they play with Velcro. Move the ball, trust your teammates. We begin a quadruple header here at Sprint Center in Kansas City with Baylor controlling the opening tip. Bob Shoes and Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe settling in for what should be a great day of Big 12 basketball. Losing his footing and going down, Mario Kegler, and a foul will be called. And what a job Scott Drew has done this season. No, he really has. He's metamorphosized this team from a power team to a perimeter team, but they haven't lost that rebounding toughness. Metamorphosized, starting the day off with a triple <laughs> word score. That is really impressive. Play Scrabble later. <laughs> Here's Kegler in the post, double team, eight to shoot. The freshman Jared Butler wraps a pass around to Freddie Gillespie. And three seconds is called. Well, Steve Prohm has ridden that roller coaster with a team that has a lot of conflicting personalities at times. They're young, probably have high expectations themselves in terms of some of their futures, and that is conflicted with the team concept at times. Unlike some of those great Iowa State teams of recent past, not a mature team yet, but this tournament can mature you quickly if you play the right way. Well, the guy with the basketball has the maturity, the senior, Nick Weiler Bad. He has been in this situation before, and he sends one down low to Jacobson. And the jump hook is good. <laughs> Baylor's best offense is the offensive rebound. So keep your eye on Gillespie and Vital when shots go up. Vital uses the screen. Eight to shoot. He's in trouble. Kegler with five on the timer. He's going to have to force one up. Halliburton to the corner to Horton Tucker. There's a triple for the Cyclones. At their best, they run and they move the ball. And that was a terrific cross cross court look by Halliburton. Oh, 
Butler, another contested shot. And there's the offensive rebound for Kegler. But he turns it over in the lane. A scramble for it. What a play by Gillespie. He kept it alive, but then missing the bunny was Kegler. Not wasting any time. Horton Tucker. That one's short. He'll do that. He's a heat check guy from the beginning. First one was terrific. That one a little forced. There's a heat check early. Knocking it down is Makai Mason. And that has been... The secret weapon that you were wondering if Baylor would have coming into this championship with that toe injury. Well, Scott Drews had to manage his minutes and games at the end of the season. I think he knew they were in the NCAA tournament. Now it's a matter of keeping him as healthy as possible. Ariel Shayok gives it up. Seven to shoot. Weiler Babb. Yes. <laughs> Iowa State, Bob, has lost six of their last eight. One of the keys has been defense. They're giving up 45% from the field. Unusually high for them. Mason off balance. Not a good shot. Vital. Tried to use strength to keep it alive and did. It's out of bounds off of Horton Tucker. It's like having Drew Brees back in the lineup. That's my example. Well, that's impactful. Yep. Mason, NBA range. Knocks it down. How about that? Horton Tucker shovels one. Perfect for Jacobson. That's the ball movement we talked about. Break the defense down. Find the open man. Horton Tucker is a unique player. He's a power wing at six foot four. Makai okay, Mason lost his footing and lost the basketball. Tried to get it back from Wilder Bad. It's a held ball, and it belongs to the Cyclones. You're a podiatrist. Yeah. You might want to come and hang out a shingle here at the Big 12 Championship, right between Shayok, between Makai Mason, Dean Wade not expected to play because of a foot injury. Uh, turf toe was something that Kamal Stokes was dealing with for the number one seed, Kansas State as well. It's amazing how many foot or toe injuries have affected the best players in this league this year. Yeah, the podiatrist, podiatrist here in this tournament, they're on retainer. <laughs> exactly. Well, Mason looks like he's got a spring in his step to start. Kegler hands one off to Gillespie easy at the rim for Baylor what an improvement from this young man Freddie Gillespie two years ago he was the fourth leading scorer on a division three team Carlton College in Minneapolis he's become a former walk-on a terrific inside presence Shayok his first three is good This team has weapons, Bob. They really have some guys that can score. What they've got to do is make the game easier for themselves and their teammates by keeping that ball moving. Mason, cross court pass to Kegler. He's got a three. Really good pass by Mason. He drew the double team in the pick and roll, but he knew where his teammate was. Tough pass. Well done. Weiler Babb lost it, but right to Horton Tucker. Shayok down the lane with the left hand. Jacobson, an offensive rebound. Traveled up. Point, Holly, and it's not a recent dilemma. This young man missed two seasons at Yale. The two seasons after he took him to the NCAA tournament, basically a non-factor. Played one game in two years, but he's got another three here. Baylor takes the lead. And Mason perfect from the field so far. Sixth man of the year has come on for Iowa State, Lindell Wigginton. 
Brady short. Offensive rebound, Wilder Babb, and a reach-in foul on the freshman Jack. And then he thought better of it and said, you know what, we're going to rest him until the first round of the league. Considering what Chris Beard's been able to do with his top rotation at Texas Tech. Well, this is a really unusual grad transfer in Makai Mason because he committed to Baylor before his senior year at Yale. And I don't remember ever hearing a, someone do that who transferred as a graduate. Devontae Bandu has come on for the first time for the Bears. Higginson on Mason, 10 to shoot. Mason gets around him and gets one out to Bandu from the elbow. He's got it. This kid's had a quietly really good second half of the year. The transfer from Hutchinson Community College. If anything, he needs to stay aggressive offensively. Wigginton down the lane, tried to wrap a pass around to Cameron Lard, and Lard was... Baylor has made five in a row to take this two-point lead. Their first miss in five trips as that one goes over the backboard off the miss by Bandu. All eyes will be on Zion Williamson if he can play and how well he will when he gets in the game as Wigginton commits an offensive foul. So when Kai Mason in that blue uniform scored 31 points against Baylor in the NCAA tournament, now he's sporting the Baylor neon. He will be playing for them in this year's NCAA tournament. You heard him say it there, pretty cool full circle for Makai Mason. It root for a kid like that to stay healthy and have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament his senior year. Absolutely. And you know, that tournament that he played well against Baylor, he played great against Duke in the next game. And Duke, Gonzaga, Notre Dame all wanted his services as a transfer. He chose to go to a team that uh, he beat in the tournament. Kedrick caught his own miss. Steve Crone was looking for a violation, and he ends up with the layup. I want to see a little better ball movement from Iowa State. Orton Tucker hits a three. Pretty good right there. Drive it, kick it. You can always count on Wyler Babb to move the ball. Very unselfish, unassuming player. And dribbles the shot clock down again. Drives it again. Fades away. The rebound tipped out. It looks like it will stay with the Bears. Watch the foul called on Lard. Taylor Hortley. He's a unique player. He's got a 6'11 wingspan, Bob. That's why he's so effective inside. And do the fadeaway. Post fouled from behind by Gillespie. Millard, Lindell Wigginton, and Solomon Young, who's looking for a medical red shirt with a groin injury. Those were three players that I think Steve Fromm thought would be not just regular members of the rotation, but maybe all in the starting lineup. And because of injury, he's had to adjust throughout the season as well. Wilder Babb, five to shoot. Midway through the first half. Drives it with the left hand. Barr tries to keep it alive. Double teams, and it looks like drawing a foul is Jared Butler. He's just essentially fouled himself out of the first half more than likely. He goes to the bench along with Cheok as Tyrese Halliburton and Michael Jacobson are back in for Iowa State. goes away from the screen, kicks one to the corner. Horton Tucker, his third triple here in the first half. Yep. Like that right there. Perfect example of rejecting the ball screen because Wigginton's man peeked at the screen. Once Wigginton saw that, he took off for the rim.
moving screen set. I want you to watch, watch Wiggins' man jump to the screen. Here comes the screen. He's going to turn his head just a little. Too late. Here he comes. Does he get to the basket? No. He makes the extra pass. This is Cyclone basketball at its best right there. And something they haven't seen often enough this year. Especially lately, Bob. And when they close out the season, losing six of their final eight, you knew they weren't themselves. Orton Tucker with a miss. Vital loses his balance. And Wigginton almost came away with the steal. Vital first to the floor. And alertly passes it back. Vital hangs, draws the foul. He went right. Talk about offensive rebounding. Just making the attempt to go after every shot is a skill in itself. Number one in the Big 12 this season, averaging three and a half offensive rebounds a game. So he crashes the glass with that athleticism and really impacts the game. Oh, he sure does. Ask any coach in this league who has to keep him off the boards. Wigginson, short, and vital clears. Wigginson takes it back. The reverse is good. Good energy right there by Wigginton. Butler forces up a three. Bad decision. As it looked like Wilder Babb got a piece. Taylor Horton Tucker lays it in. The freshman goes coast to coast. Taylor Horton Tucker with 11. Timeout called by Scott Drew. Hilton South making their presence known here in Kansas City as the Cyclones have a two point lead. Who's on, better? I think Virginia's still better. I really do. I know they lost twice. I may be crazy. NC State up right now on them. And I want to ask you, that would be a major, major upset. But you saw the upset of all upsets the other night. St. Mary's. What was that like? You know, I never thought that I would see a team take Gonzaga so much out of how they want to play and what they want to do and execute it so perfectly. But that's what St. Mary's did. I mean, from the opening tap all the way through, they controlled the tempo. And it was fun to watch. Fun to watch a team want to execute a game plan the coach puts it out there and have them so perfectly go out and execute it as Wigginson gets to the rim and it is rejected by Gillespie the other way the layup is good for Jared Butler he's got a bucket Baylor, Baylor fans are going to love that kid they already do 31 at Allen Fieldhouse on Saturday as a freshman career high obviously Wigginson turns it over tried to find Wilder Babb Ty Mason, short. And Jacobson able to control it for the Cyclone. Well, in that last Baylor huddle, Scott Drew really got on his team for being not aggressive enough. He said, this is playoff basketball. You need to go in there, take it into the lane, be more aggressive. He said, it's going to be a block or a charge. They're going to have to call it. But we've seen too many settling for outside shots. They were hitting a few of them early, but they've missed their last two. And now a foul called on Gillespie. Away from the back. The back call, okay? But by this time of the year, to your point, Fred Gillespie needs to know that with three really good officials, that if you move to set a screen to get Makai Mason open, everybody sees that it's going to be called. So not a smart play this time of year. You should know better by now. Execution is critical, Bob. These possessions, every one of them means something. Wigginson throws it down. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't hesitating, even though that last one got blocked. He's always on the attack. Little stutter step by Makai Mason, and he forces Wigginton 
to commit the foul. And pick and roll, Jacobson and his man, the shot blocker, were out on that three-point line, and Lindell recognized that. He's out there playing with two, and I don't think Steve Pro minds that as much because of all that guard depth they have. Vital off the feed from Makai Mason. We always say in coaching, playing hard is a skill, and that is Mark Vital's best basketball skill. Shayok has only taken two shots so far, hunting one here, but has to give it up. And then a lazy pass over to Wigginton, who recovers for three, gets fouled! And he just about had a chance at a four-point play. Scott Drew thought that he kicked the leg out, but Butler was called for the foul. What you think of the call? I, I did, from here, I didn't like it because I don't like, you know, we try to protect the shooter by calling fouls. Let's see if there's anything up top. You know, in retrospect, it looked like he got him on the elbow. It really did, Bob. And Scott Drew was, I think, thinking that what drew the call was that little yes. flush of the ankle yep. with Wigginton kicking out the leg. Here than I used to be. I would have sworn that he didn't have that right, and I have to give him some respect. I don't know, I, I remember calling some games where you were <laughs> on the sideline, and I always thought that you were a pretty mellow guy. Mason goes at Shayok, fades away. Shayok's got the rebound. Looks for the hit ahead. Halliburton plays it in. I can't tell you how that energizes your team when the ball moves like that. 70-foot pass, and it energizes their home crowd here as well. Gillespie fouls. And it looks like that's going to be Wigginton, and that will be his third with under four minutes to go in the first. As we'll see in a bit. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Well, Makai Mason has made an impact in his return as Gillespie goes to the line. And for those guys, point, friend, and we talked to Steve Prohm earlier today, and he said our defense has been a disaster over the past month, month and a half. Have you seen a difference today? I think they're more locked in, yeah. Now, this is not a, a high potent offense by, by Baylor as far as scoring 70 or 80. But, yeah, I think they're locked in intensity-wise. <clears throat> Interesting. Makai Mason tried to draw the charge and instead gets tagged with the block. Let's... I don't mind the late whistle either. I don't. Some people say, why'd he blow it late? I'd rather them get what they think is the right call a tick late on the whistle. Shayok, a long two. He connects. That's his only, his second basket on his third field goal attempt here in the first half. And it was an iso. It wasn't ball movement, but credit him. 14 times this year, he's gone over 20. He knows how to put the ball in the basket. Kegler, blocked by Horton Tucker. Gets it back. And a foul call. Especially with your largest lead right now. Maybe you try and play these last three minutes with Horton Tucker on the bench. Yeah, the problem is right now they they like this guard lineup, and that would be bringing George Condit, the young freshman, big in the game, who has played well. Shayok for three. No pass, right? Long rebound, a hustle play by Halliburton. Tucker, contested fadeaway, banks it in. <laughs> Guy Mason uses the screen up to the wing. Kegler hits a three. That's a big shot for Baylor. Well, Mario Kegler, the last 14 games, he's making about 40% from out there. Wilder Babb, a floater. 
That's an offensive foul. That time Mason was in position and took the charge. Kegler for three again. Shayok around Makai Mason. Jacobson with an offensive rebound. The back tap will be controlled by Wilder Bat. Taylor's played a lot of man-to-man -man this first half. They've gone zone recently. Steve. Absolutely. They love their basketball in this part of the country. And despite the fact that KU is only 40 miles down the road, Bob, you don't necessarily always feel they have a huge advantage in here. In fact, some years it feels like Hilton Coliseum South when these guys are playing well. Hilton South up on their feet for another Taylor. Taylor Horton Tucker three. That's his fourth here in the first half. Good rhythm, too. Good follow through at the end, not rushed. Scott Drew's got a problem if he's making threes. Makai Mason blocked. Jacobson on the loose ball, and here comes Wilder Babb. Feeling it is Horton Tucker. And that might have been a little too much of a heat check. 31% on the season, so you go into a game like this saying, we'll dare him to shoot. But there's been a couple games this year where because of his confidence in himself, he will let it fly and make some. Eric Butler goes one-on-one. -on -one. No good. Tipped out, right? To King McClure. Six-second differential. Ten to shoot. Makai Mason steps back over Shea. Air ball. Seven seconds on the clock for Iowa State. I trust Wyler Babb here to make the right play. Just put your head down, get to the paint, make a play for your teammates. He goes to the basket. Can't bank it in. And it'll be a 38-29 lead at halftime for Iowa State as the Cyclones end the first half on a 12-3 run. Good, good ball movement, good shooting. Horton Tucker so far the star. Let's go over to Holly. Well, Coach, given that Baylor makes a living on rebounding, how significant is it that you lead them in rebounding going into the half? Well, that's why we're probably up nine. We got to do it for 40 minutes, though. They really came out of the gate shooting the ball well, four threes early. The three-point line, we got to defend, and then we got to rebound the ball if we're going to be able to sustain our lead. How did you like the balance of your team? They shared the basketball, but then when somebody got hot, they went to Taylor Horton Tucker. Yeah, Taylor was great offensively the first half, but also I thought he competed against Vital uh, down here in, in kind of that muddy area down there in the paint. But he made shots. The guys shared the ball. That's why we're here 40 at the half. We got to do it again, though. The biggest key is we've only given up 29. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Set for the start of the second half of the first of four here at the Sprint Center in Kansas City. Great start to the day for Iowa State and Baylor. This is the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Makai Mason able to play today through the pain in his foot. Nick Weiler Babb, his senior season as Iowa State. They had been on a roller coaster and they're trying to advance to rounds. Number three here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship as the quarterfinals off to a good start between Baylor and Iowa State. The one seed Kansas State coming up next against TCU and then Texas Tech, West Virginia, Kansas, Texas. That caps the day. Bob Bashuz in here with Fran for Schillip. Holly Rowe will join us again. Many nights it's been this guy, the freshman from Chicago, Taylor Horton Tucker. Now he's only shooting 31% behind the arc coming into this game. But he's a rhythm shooter, and he has absolutely been in rhythm tonight. And he uses that athleticism as well to his advantage. 
Let's head over to for outside shots, and we're not doing a good job shooting over Iowa State's length. He also said they've got to do a better job on the boards. He said that's the reason we beat them in their last two matchups. We out rebounded them. It was 23 rebounds total in two games that they were better. They've got to do a better job on the glass. Well, to your point, Holly, right away, Jared Butler takes it to the paint and scores. Yes. Play from the paint out. Baylor now going zone. They played an awful lot of man in the first half. Halliburton from the corner. It's a zone buster. He's still shooting over 40% on the season. This guy has a limited role down the stretch, in part because he's checked his ego at the door as a fresh good role player. Vital lost his footing back out to Makai Mason for three. Wow. They, they put different defenders on him, but he is a streak shooter and a deep shooter, so you got to go out there and make him a driver. Halliburton again. Back to back threes for the freshmen. Mason picks up his dribble. Jared Butler forces up a three. And a rebound run down by Gillespie. Butler another try. Out of bounds to Burton, a young man who was so valuable early in the year, Bob, when Wigginton was hurt for 10 games. But unlike his older teammates, he's willing to accept a role right now so that this team plays well together. He can still shoot that ball. You know, the fourth best three-point shooter in the Big 12, but only been in double figures two of his last 17 games. Just shows you how unselfish Halliburton is. So he will be a very good player in this league in three that? years. Yep. Left-handed flip from Michael Jacobson. Largest lead for the Cyclones. Mason for three again. Shayok got tied up with Vital, and it looks like they've got Shayok holding Vital for his first foul. How about in three years at Virginia, only one game of 20 points or more in 101? He's got 14 this season. Whoops. Butler double teamed and pays the price. Turns it over. He's a pterodactyl. When the gravy boat hits the table, I have a wingspan. Wilder bad with the left hand. <laughs> Scott Drew wants a timeout. Halliburton fired up, as is the Cyclone faithful. It's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Hugs saw their NCAA lives uh, pass before their eyes before coming back and winning that game. Good hands by Taylor Horton Tucker. Shayok right at Makai Mason. Offensive foul. The second time in the game that Mason has been able to draw a charge. Vital goes right at Jacobson. Jacobson gets the rebound. Horton Tucker blocks Jacobson, follows. Shayok can't hit the three, and the rebound falls to Kegler. Double dribble. Kegler turns it over. 14-point lead for Iowa State, the first of four today here in Kansas City. play for Duke in the ACC championship. Halliburton, he is blocked by Vital. And Duke off balance. Offensive
offensive rebound vital. Out to Mason. Another hustle play by Baylor as it's run down by Kegler, but he gave it away. Here comes Halliburton, leans in, and finishes. And Makai Mason's hurt behind the play. Stays in the game. Vital with the left hand. Baylor not scoring easy today, so this 14-point deficit feels bigger. Horton Tucker throws it up towards Weiler bad, but Mason walls him off. Nice bounce pass to King McClure, and he's fouled by Halliburton. He's been out since early January, ironically in a game against Iowa State in Waco. Actually became really efficient offensively. Baylor cuts it down to 12, but they need some stops. Iowa State shooting 51% from the field for the game. Wide open in the corner. And that three is buried again by Taylor Horton Tucker. He's got five triples. Simple pick and roll on the opposite side of the floor. And Hal Burton find the fellow, found the fellow freshman. Makai Mason dragged the pivot foot. Let's watch. Good execution. Halliburton lines it up and Lord couldn't finish. He was set to hang from the rim. Makai Mason the other way. Fades away. Off the window. Old school. Horton Tucker drives it this time. Mason wants to cross over Wigginton. Finds Vital. It's down to 11. Mason hobbling. Hanging in there. He's gutting it out. Yep. Again, he has a couple of floating bones right underneath his toe that get inflamed. And it just causes him a ton of pain. But Makai Mason is fighting through it, trying to check Wigginton. Wigginton back to the set. Great cut behind the defense. Baylor was occupied with the ball screen, and Shayok slipped to the baseline. Well done. Good find by Wigginton. Vital leans in. Contact, no call. As Cameron Lard didn't get the benefit of the doubt from the officials. Vital in double figures for only the ninth time this season. Shayok. Got it. Kegler, a lot of dribbling. He is met. And he fouls Wigginson. Sacrifice for him. It's an amazing story as Shaq gets a three. Imagine being 18, 19 years old and a doctor comes in and tells you your athletic life might be over. Hard to handle. Terrific family. King was the valedictorian at his high school, and his dad is the principal there. Sit, 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 sit. Not that that had anything to do with it, Bob. <laughs> Great student. This game, though, is starting to get away from Baylor. 60 to 44 as Shayok draws the foul. What does Baylor have to do to tighten this game up and actually give them some shooting over 50%? So stops first, and then they just have to find a hot hand. If it's not Mason, it might be Butler, McClure, but it's got to be here, Bob. Wigginton will drive it, and that'll be goaltending on Gillespie with two seconds on the shot clock. Did you see how far Cam Lard came out to set the screen? 
that brought Gillespie away from the basket. And see, Freddie's not reacting quick enough. Not his fault. He was stuck out there guarding pick and roll. Smart play by Wigginton to see the uh, alley open and go. I think this is the most talented team in this tournament, Iowa State. And I'm not the only one that said that. A number of coaches in this league. If they play like this, they are dangerous. They can win it all in this tournament. Shot clock winding down for Baylor. And a foul called. Kegler will go to the free throw line. Maybe he can work his way back, though, for the NCAA tournament. Yes, and remember, they went to the Elite Eight last year, and Dean Wade played a total of eight minutes in the NCAA tournament. TCU's going to have to find a way to score in two games. They've only scored 53 points on average against that K-State defense. Wigginton gets to the rim again. Can't score it this time, Nick by Gillespie. Jared Butler, nice find to Kegler for the reverse. Great look away, too. Butler looked up the court on the right side, but he knew out of the corner of his eye, Kegler was hustling down the left side. Weiler Babs sets up large. Blocked by Gillespie. And do. Yes. Baylor trying to work their way back in the game. Getting stops, getting buckets, and they've cut it down to 13. Steve Pro. Remember, Steve Pro took over a program left by the mayor, Fred Hoiberg, and one of the things that we love that he did was leave a lot of that motion offense, the cutting, the screening, the NBA style in place. You're right about the Cyclones, though. When they get it going, everyone's involved and the ball moves. You're scratching your head to think that they lost six of their final eight games to close the season. Yep, especially when you win at Texas Tech and Kansas State. Wigginton draws a foul. L. Wigginton all the way from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. His parents are here to see him today. Nicole and Fleming, they came all the way from Halifax, to Montreal, Montreal to New York, New York to Kansas City. It was quite a journey for them, but you know, he, he's very proud that, uh, you know, he said, I grew up in public housing, but now I'm really proud of how my family is making things work. He said, I'm proud of myself for being at Iowa State and all that I've accomplished here, getting my education. So a long journey in many ways for the Wigington family. And he's one of only two players, Holly, from Nova Scotia playing college basketball. Nate Darling, I think, at Delaware is the other. They were. Youth League teammates years ago. Mason. Short. Gillespie. Offensive rebound. Bandu tries a three. That won't go. Vital went up with Wigginton. And it's out off Vital. And remember, Bob, this, this connection started with guys like Jamie Vanderbeeken and then Melvin Edgem. And then, uh, obviously, uh, Naz Mitru Long, another Canadian. And... And, and Holly Rowe, I want to ask about Bridget Carlton, the Big 12 Player of the Year, the Cyclone. She's a star, isn't she? She's been the most important player from Canada, probably in the Big 12 this season. She was the first time Big 12 Player of the Year for Iowa State win, women, a huge honor for Bill Fenley and that crew, and she deserved it, averaging 28 points per game. They can all score her names. As Shayok's latest three extends the Iowa State lead. Makai Mason, that won't go. And it looks like Horton Tucker able to rip it away from Gillespie. And they get Freddie Gillespie for the foul. Shayok. Jacobson with an offensive rebound. Shot fake. Draws the foul on Vital. Frustration for Baylor. Iowa State with a big lead with under eight to go here in Kansas City. Order any pizza.
King McClure with a spin move. Comes up short. Had the open jumper. You need to shoot it. Let your te de teammates rebound it. Jacobson nice. running the floor, but he's met from behind by Vital. What a play that was. What an athletic play by Mark Vital. How many more athletic guys are there in the country than this kid? Horton Tucker. Just about got the friendliest shooter role ever. Sandu around Weiler Bab to the corner. Kegler for three. Got it. Well, it's getting late for Baylor. So they're going to have to do it down here as well. And Nick Weiler Babb, who missed last year's Big 12 tournament, but was a part of the championship in 17, is a good guy to have a ball in his hands. The answer from Shea. That's a backbreaker for Baylor. Yes, it is. You need to get a stop. And Dad loves watching Mario Shayok. Big second half for him. Kegler. King McClure keeps it alive. Bandu tries a three. That's good. And Baylor gets stops to make one last push in the last six minutes. And they also don't really pressure, so they can't speed the tempo up. And with Wilder Babb and the ball in his hands, he's a good guy to facilitate this offense right now. A lot of assists today for the Cyclones, a good sign. Wigginson, foul. But one guy who's made his mark this season in this league, watch Mark Vidal come into your picture. And he lets hustle right there. We talked about in the first half, hustle is a skill, playing hard is a skill. This guy's got it. Amazing athlete. It's been done before by Baylor. Yep. <laughs> Wigginson, he's going to go to the free throw line. Cowboys found a tight end on this Baylor basketball team a couple of years ago. Vital, I mean, don't sleep on us. We might be your agents. <laughs> did you guys get a cut? We did, Rico, we did not. We Rico did not, Rico. You... No, I'm Rico. waiting. The, where, where's the percentage? Lunch, something, you know? Rudy's Barbecue <laughs> and Waco, something. Cheddar's, how about Magnolia Cafe? Anything, Rico. You, you are really an equal opportunity, someone else picking up the check kind Absolutely. of guy. Absolutely, you got me. Whatever establishment, you're fine. If it's free, it's me. Akai <laughs> Mason turns it over. Numbers, the lob, Wigginson. A little too high from Weiler back. Bandu. With the left hand. And you can see Bob Baylor doesn't have the energy to extend that pressure defense at all. Wigginson, right around Bandu. Four different players in double figures for Iowa State scoring. Kegler backs down Taylor Horton Tucker. Shovels one to Vital. Wigginson way up in the air for the rebound. And now Iowa State starts to take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit and milk the clock. One thing we have historical perspective of, Bob, is when Iowa State wins that quarterfinal game, you can bet there'll be more maroon and gold here tomorrow. Looking to no good. Kegler from the corner. Weiler bad. Wrestled away by King McClure. You know, while we're at it, this Baylor team is going to be really good a year from now. Got some outstanding guards sitting out. Tristan Clark. A lot of these guys are back. Bandu and Butler and Vital, Kegler. Horton Tucker. Plus the foul. What a game he's had. 21 for Horton Tucker. Take a look now. He's got a 6'11 wingspan. And watch him put it to good use here, Bob. Up, around, and over.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Well, Iowa State, that's been the theme of the second half here with Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe as well. And Taylor Horton, Tuck, Taylor Horton Tucker can't complete the three-point play. Jacobson with an offensive rebound, and this has been a pull-away throughout the second half yep. for the Cyclones. Solid performance. Quality shots, good hustle. They've matched Baylor's intensity on the backboards. Wigginton mugs, and he will go to the free-throw line. Now, we do expect that this Baylor Bears group is still going to be an NCAA tournament team in spite of all but certainly losing this game. Wins over Iowa State, Texas Tech during the season bolster their resume, and they're going to get Makai Mason now some rest before the tournament starts. And not only that, Bob, if they're capable of winning that opening round game, they also have the day off in between with which to rest Makai Mason. This team's already overachieved this year. Where I think they can cause problems for teams is that they do play a lot of a unique zone, and they're also great on the glass. But it wouldn't shock me if they go out early because they've maximized everything they can out of this talent this year. Great coaching job by Scott Drew. We all knew that, but uh, they've, they've acquitted themselves well this season. And their best scorer is Makai Mason, and he's playing hurt. Kegler. That's no good. Wilder Babs got the rebound. And this Iowa State group, if they are clicking on all cylinders, losing six of their last eight to close the season, kind of fell off the map nationally. And all of a sudden, you might wake up in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight and say, whoa, where'd that Iowa State team come from? They're that good. They are. They are. In that streak, their assists went down and their defensive field goal percentage went up. And that has to change. And it's changed a little bit today. And we've already seen how many weapons they have on the offensive end. And Steve Crone's going to empty the bench and give his guys some Kansas City curtain calls as he feels like he's got at this one in the bank as Kegler draws a foul. That's going to go on Wigginton. It's a line change set for Steve Prome. <laughs> He's got five set to hop over the boards and play the last two plus minutes. As this might be just one big collective curtain call for the five on the floor for the Cyclones. And here it comes. They're going to get that Hilton South salute. Looks like the Iowa State bench we've seen in years past. You're Chest exactly. bumping yep. and smiles and team chemistry and a buy-in as opposed to what they've gone through down the stretch of the regular season. And they're all great kids. We've been around them. It's just that, uh, you know, sometimes everybody's agenda goes different ways. And the best teams in the country, the teams that go far in postseason, are teams that are connected. The more you win, the more credit everybody gets. Terrence Lewis lost it on the way up. Gathers with five to shoot. Halliburton's got the force one up from Steph Curry range. And it's been that kind of day for the Cyclones. Mason. That won't go. Lewis has the rebound. And Halliburton gets it across. Rimming one off was Eric Steyer, one of the walk-ons. And the Cyclone faithful were hoping for a walk-on three. Watch this. Halliburton knows the shot clock's low, so he says, I'm going to get one up here. And he's hit some deep ones today. That is way out there. Way out there. <laughs> he shot that one from Ames. <laughs> Oh. This young man came to 
Iowa State, nobody knew who he was. And by the middle of the season, he was playing 37 minutes a game. As you see, the Horn Frogs breathing a sigh of relief after last night. Surviving, I think, is a good way to put it, right? It's, it's also two games in about 20 hours. Yep. Matthew Meyer with a shot fake as some of the reserves for Baylor get a chance to come in the game with a minute to go. K-State going to play this next game, obviously, without Dean Wade. But they've done that before. We'll see Cartier Jara back in the lineup. Steyer gets one near midcourt of steal. And here's Halliburton. So Iowa State will advance to the semifinals of the Phillips 66 to 12 championship. They will await the winner of our next game. It'll be the one seed, Kansas State, taking on the Horn Frogs that survived after surrendering a 21-point lead to Oklahoma State. Desmond Bain hit what would turn out to be a game-winning three. Okay, came knocks one down. Well, the football player. He walked on the football team and the basketball team at Baylor. It's a pretty good story. But what has now become maybe a big story of this tournament, the coming together of this Iowa State group. They're capable, Bob. They've shown it all season long. They played without Wiggins in early in the year. The young guy stepped up. They had some cracks in their armor. But talent-wise, there's no team more talented in this tournament than this team if they play the right way they did today. And of the top teams in the league, maybe right now, outside of Shayok playing through some foot pain, there might not be a healthier team in the Big 12 than Iowa State as they become the first of the eventual four to move through to the semifinals. The second basket of the game, you take a three and it swishes in. How do you know you're so on in the first half of this game? Uh, you know, just doing the things Coach told me to do, you know, let it come to me. So just being able to get that three fall, uh, you know, just seeing my shot go in, it was a big opportunity for me. What does it mean to you when your teammates know you're hot, they keep finding you with the ball? 15 assists for your team today. Uh, that's just the thing we do. You know, it's a different person's night every night. So whenever, whoever's night it is, we're going to keep feeding them. You know, so tonight was my night, and, you know, it's a great thing we got out of the first round this year. This is the first time you've played here in the Big 12 tournament. What do you think about the fans here and the energy they gave you in this game today? Uh, they call it Hill and South for a reason. So, you know, just the fans are great. You know, the output that they had today, you know, it, it, proved, it showed, you know, that we needed it. It's truly Hill himself. This win is your first in three games. How do you build on this for the next round? Uh, just con continue building on the same win. So just being level-headed, uh, taking it one game at a time is the most important thing for us right now. Thank you, Taylor. There was only one other time this season that Taylor Horton Tucker made more than five threes in a game. So that ties his second best three-point performance of the year. Iowa State moves on. Coming up next, it's TCU and Kansas State. For Fran Braschillo and Holly Rowe, I'm Bob Lashusen. Back in about 30 minutes for game two right now. Back to Chris Cotter in the studio. Welcome to College Basketball Live Scoreboard. Presented by BMW.